Right now, Utility Scavenger is one of the best economy cards in the game, if not the best. And I'm going to explain why and why you should care. All right. So the reason why you should care about a really good economy card, especially one that is disproportionately as strong as Utility Scavenger is, is it just makes the entire game easier. Every single element of this game is touched by economy. That could be your weapons. It could be what you put on your weapons. It could be what you carry. It could be what you upgrade. It could be how much you heal. There are so many different things that are touching copper or economy and utility scavenger has multiple ways in which it's making that all easier. So one thing I think we should do real quick to help you really understand how good utility scavenger is, is I think we should look at the regular copper cards. And I'll go through each one of these copper cards and explain what their value is, why you should pick them, why you shouldn't pick them. And something to keep in mind about Utility Scav is part of the reason why its value is so high right now is due to the changes they've been making to the game. Be it things with the alarm doors or the mutation spawns, etc. We'll get a little bit more into that. But Utility Scavenger didn't used to be so great. <laughs> But right now it's at an all-time high. But now on to these copper cards here. We have Bounty Hunter. And then speaking of cards that have gained value due to changes to the game, this card allows you to get up to 300 copper per level if you kill a bunch of mutations. There's more mutations now than there used to be, so this card is more likely to be maxed out than it was in the past. But still, it's only 300 copper per level. There's a bunch of other cards here that outperform that. Compound Interest? <sighs> the problem with Compound Interest is even though it kind of got a buff, it also got a huge nerf. So each cleaner gains 5% of the total copper in each safe room. It used to be it was 10%, but then only one person got that value. So you would just funnel all the copper to that one person. So now you don't have to do that funneling, but you have to have more cards in order to get the same amount of value. So compound interest is really nice if things are going well. It doesn't provide a whole lot of value if things aren't. It works really well if you're using things like hired gun as a burn card. Lucky pennies is a terrible card. Please don't pick it. <laughs> That 35% chance to have 35% additional copper is not in your favor. First off, it's only a third of a chance that you're going to get this a miraculous upgrade anyway to your copper pile. And on top of that, the copper piles in this game are skewed in a way where there are the most amount of copper piles that are the size of 25 copper. Then it goes 50 and then it goes 100. 100 has the least amount of chance to spawn. So on top of the fact that... It only has a third of a chance of working to begin with. The odds are just not in your favor. All these other cards are going to do a way better job and a much more consistent job. We're going to save Money Grubbers for last year because Money Grubbers and Copper Scav work really well together. So let's quickly talk about Share the Wealth and Hazard Pay. Share the Wealth makes it so everybody on the team gets 100 bonus copper. So ultimately, your whole team gets 400 copper, right? So this is going to be much better than Hazard Pay, which gives you 250 copper at the start of each level. It's, it's just a better version of hazard pay. The only caveat is that you need to be able to share copper amongst your teammates and sometimes I get it in solo queue nobody talks to anyone nobody shares anything so I can see why people might want to pick hazard pay but I encourage you share the wealth. Honestly out of all these cards I would say share the wealth might be the best one and let me explain why and again we're gonna get to utility scavenger but let's go through a lesson on these copper cards. So 400 copper at the beginning of the level right now how much copper can you get out of money grubbers? Well, what I did for you guys was I put together this little spreadsheet and I went and did some digging and asked some questions of Turtle Rock and what I had learned is that on average, there's supposed to be between 12 to 14, but I'm leaning 14 copper piles on a typical nightmare level. So if you have 14 piles on a nightmare level and you go ahead and find all 14 piles, you might have to zoom in a little bit, I can zoom in for you here in the video. That would mean that in an ideal scenario where you find every copper pile, you're only getting 315 copper for the level due to money grubbers. Suppose to share the wealth, which gives you 400. I know a long time ago we talked about how great money grubbers was and a couple of things about that. One, money grubbers just used to be better, <laughs> used to give you more copper. Also, a lot of where that came from was recruit numbers, and recruit gives you more copper piles. It gives you like 20-ish, all right? Nightmare doesn't give you as many copper piles. I went and got that confirmed over with some folks at Turtle Rock. Now, what about Copper Scavenger, right? So you might be thinking, well, Copper Scavenger synergizes really well with Money Grubbers. Maybe if you bring those two together. And that is a good way to think about it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers again here. So depending on how many copper piles you get here from copper scavenger and if you find them all you would have to find 16 copper piles throughout your team in order to kind of break even with share the wealth right because you get 408 total copper for the level and then if you get to 17 18 that's where you start to get these benefits i don't know exactly how many copper piles you're going to get with copper scav 
but I'm going to guess it's around 17 to 18. I'd be shocked if you're hitting 20. All right. So you would need to have a two card investment in order to break even and then also have the ideal scenario where you are finding more than 16 copper piles, which let me tell you, you're not going to get that every level. Sometimes things get a little stressful and you don't get that choice. On top of the fact, there's one other thing going on with money grubbers that you need to consider. So that other thing is that money grubbers doesn't really show you its benefit until you pick up the copper right? Meaning that you're not going to feel that benefit until the next level. Where we share the wealth, you get it right away. So let me, let me make this a little bit more straightforward here. So if I go to play here and I go to training and I'll go to recruit so you can really see every single level. If I have share the wealth on, I'm getting an extra 400 copper on one one, right? And then when I reach one two, that's an extra 400 copper. So total, I'm at 800 extra copper at this point. Now, if I have money grubbers on, and I also have to have Copper Scavenger on in order to even maybe break even. You're not going to feel that until Tunnel of Blood. All right. So the result is that you need to have many levels in a row until you can finally say that you have reached the same value that Share the Wealth has for your team. And all of those levels have to be going perfectly. So let's say you were getting 500 copper a level due to a copper scab and money grubbers combo. So that would mean you would have to go through one, two, three, four. You wouldn't really start breaking even until clean sweep. So you see what I'm saying here? Money grubbers isn't quite as cool as we once thought. <laughs> Things have changed. The environment has changed. I talked about money grubbers basically when the game came out. It's been a while since we really talked about it. So to repeat, on the topic of copper cards here, I really feel that share the wealth is probably the best one. Now, you can argue that Copper Scavenger is going to spawn just an extra couple of piles anyway, so those piles themselves do add value, so an extra 25, 25, 25, or a mixture of 25 to 100, so there is that little bit of extra value there. But if we're just looking at Money Grubbers compared to Share the Wealth, it's not good. So you need to combo Money Grubbers and Copper Scav together in order to beat out share the wealth and then something else to keep in mind <laughs> regarding having to go through a certain amount of levels in order to reach the same value that share the wealth has provided anyway these acts do not all have the same amount of levels if you go ahead again take a look at recruit here you'll see that act three has way fewer levels than act one does right you just have less of a chance to make that up per level so that's even a larger argument for share the wealth and its value more generally speaking, for all the acts, as opposed to the Money Grubber's Copper Scap combo. Because look, you just don't have as many opportunities here. And when you only have 15 cards, and you typically want to pick an economy card early, and those early cards have a lot of value, this is where you start to go, eh, well, I don't know, man. But then, never mind all of this. <laughs> because frankly, it doesn't matter in the land of Utility Scavenger. Or frankly, any of the Scavenger cards. This is a PSA for Utility Scavenger, but a lot of these Scavenger cards follow the same kind of methodology here I'm about to explain. So, Utility Scavenger, what it does, and all the Scavenger cards, what they do is they take their category, and they just make more of that category. That's what they're supposed to do. This is what I've been told that they're supposed to do. So, you take the Utility category, and you just make more of it. That's more Defibrillators. That is more Toolkits. That is more Stun Guns. That is more Ammo Pouches. That is more Razor Wire. On top of the fact that it makes it easier for you to see them. So now to really make this really easy to understand and really easy to see, let me go into a level here so you can really, really conceptualize it. So I went ahead and I selected Carly here because Carly is also uniquely talented in the utility department because she starts with a toolkit, which is really helpful on this particular level resurgence. And then also she just gets an extra slot, which does complement utility scavenger very well. But I don't think I even really have to go that far into the level to really showcase how important some of this stuff is. Now, one thing to keep in mind, in case you guys don't know how this works, this whole shop thing, if you've ever wondered how the, the sales work, there's a potential for three sales to happen, and they can be applied to any item any number of times. So, you can have one item that gets a triple sale, which is how you get these defibrillators that, I think I saw defibs that were like 67 copper a piece, or bandages that were like 31 copper a piece. <laughs> But typically what happens is they get spread out a little bit. So what you'll see here is there's a flashbang that has a sale, there's a med kit that has a sale, and there's an ammo pouch that has a sale. But beyond that lesson, let's talk about these numbers themselves. So what you'll see here is defibrillator costs 250, a toolkit costs 350, a stun gun costs 200, ammo typically costs 250, and a razor wire usually costs 200. So what I'm trying to teach you guys today and to help you really understand how much value there really is with these items here is try to remember what we just talked about 
with Share the Wealth. It provides 400, then Money Grubbers only provides like 315. And you need to play other cards to make Money Grubbers a bit better. Now, you take a look here, you could just get one toolkit and that outperforms Money Grubbers all by itself. And toolkits are extremely valuable, especially right now. So if I go ahead and buy a toolkit here, I can show it to you right away. It's very, very straightforward. And you know, we might even more find some more toolkits right away here too. Because I actually do have Utility Scavenger on. Yeah, right here. In the February update, what happened was they made it so that the common no longer break down alarm doors. Meaning that you either have to eat an alarm or you just have to skip the door and not pick up any of the loot that's in there anyway. Which further makes money grubbers more useless. In comparison to Utility Scavenger, right? Because if you can't open a door because you want to deal with the Horde, well, that's a big problem. So let's think of all the different things that are being benefited by being able to open the door. One is that if you don't have to go ahead and eat a Horde, that saves resources, right? So that can save a grenade in case things got a little hairy, or that can save a pipe bomb. So that's 150 on a grenade, or that's 300 on a pipe bomb. Or let's say that horde went ahead and hurt some of your teammates. That's 150 on a bandage, or heck, maybe 300 on a first aid cabinet. Or not first aid cabinet, first aid kit. But you know, actually, on the topic of first aid cabinets, that's another thing that people like to use in order to replenish their trauma because they took damage during a horde. So what these toolkits are doing is not only providing that 350 value that they themselves inherently have, but they're also saving resources in every other category. That is why some of these scavenger cards are so, so useful. They're not as general as copper. I can't buy an upgrade with the toolkit but it helps me save a lot of money so I can go ahead and buy an upgrade with all the money I saved. You are saving in so many different categories. So just picture what we just talked about here, right? Well, here we go. See, he threw a grenade to deal with that. Thanks, Bot Hoffman. But let's say I found a toolkit, right? So if I found a toolkit, I didn't have to buy a toolkit. That's 350. And if that toolkit made it so I didn't have to eat a horde, and let's say I saved just one bandage, right? Well, then that's 150 or one pills, 125, right? So now our total is at about 500. And let's say we saved a pipe bomb because a lot of people like to throw pipe bombs anytime there's a horde because they get overwhelmed. Well, then suddenly you're at 800 just from one thing saved. Oh, and you know what? Let's say we found a room that we couldn't get in before and we found ourselves two copper piles in there that total up to be, I don't know, 75. So just like that, because of Utility Scavenger finding one toolkit, you just got yourself, I don't know, what, 875 copper saved total throughout the team? And when you factor in, <laughs> oh my God, that <laughs> this keeps happening and that there's many items that spawn with a scavenger card. I don't know how many there is. There's at least six. So let's say you find two toolkits, two stun guns, two defibs. I just hit my freaking desk. That's 400 on stun guns. That's 700 on your toolkits. That's 500 on your defibs. And not only that, if you are finding defibs, that allows you to get more value out of things like medical professional because then you can keep up on your trauma better because you could be more liberal with your defib usage. It, it, there's so many areas where this all starts to touch just because you have these utility items. And I didn't even start talking about razor wire, which can completely nullify the threat on so many different levels. It makes them trivial, such as the diner, such as barroom blitz, such as, gr what, grave danger at the end of Act 2? So many levels are immensely benefiting from razor wire. Oh, T5? That's another one. Some of the hardest levels in the game otherwise. Oh, here's the defib right here. So if some of these guys were to go down and take trauma and I had medical professional on, I could just be like, sup, and then use my defib I just found. And then there's a razor wire right there. And then who knows what else is up here? Like, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. And all of these things have their own value, right? And I can keep walking here and you'll see more and more stuff pop up. Oh, by the way, on the topic of dealing with alarm doors and all that type of crap, there's something I should mention here. If you are in 1-1 and you have an alarm door right there and you're going to have to eat the alarm door anyway, something you can consider doing is a lot of times there's an alarm door right around in here that you could shoot. Yeah, you see that door. I'm on veteran right now, so you can't actually see the alarm right here like the typical would be. But you can shoot this alarm and what that'll do is alert that door. But then these guys will come rushing through here and take out this alarm and the next thing you know, you took out a few alarm doors and you're prepped for later too and you're in a good spot to go hold down in the safe room. One thing to mention, supply crates. I don't think scavenger cards are supposed supposed to affect supply crates. If you thought they did, pretty sure I was told by Turtle Rock that they don't. Oh, another thing. Speaking of getting more use out of your utility scab, I really encourage you 
to go ahead and do stuff like this. You see what just happened there? You see the, on the topic of saving other categories money? So that freaking stun gun i just went up stunned him that tall boy was about to swing at somebody give him an extra second he was gonna clobber holly and evangelo and then they're in a worse position on health which means we have to heal them which means that takes money that takes economy that takes resources but instead i just found a stun gun granted i did find it in this box over here but i'm pretty sure i found one over here earlier too that i just didn't even pick up if you want to get more use out of your stun guns and you're on a computer i recommend putting like the five button on your mouse and just make it really really easy Go ahead and reprogram it. Get really used to using your quick items quickly. And again, I want to be clear that this type of theory where a scavenger card provides value into a bunch of different other categories is not exclusive to Utility Scavenger. Part of the reason why Utility Scavenger is so good at it right now, though, is due to the toolkit thing. Because if you spawn six toolkits, in the past, I was like, okay, I don't need that many toolkits. Thanks, though. But now you kind of do, due to the way that the doors work. And you know what? Come this April update, this could all change. But as of now, Utility Scavenger is freaking nuts, and you really ought to consider putting it in your deck. Okay? Rah! So, this has been a little PSA on Utility Scavenger. I think I talked way more than I intended to, but I hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope you consider the game a little bit differently than you were before, too. If you can understand the economy of pretty much any game you play, you're going to be in a good spot. You know, speaking of economy, being able to see what numbers and how much I have to invest into a shot here is where now just power really becomes useful, too. But that's a completely different topic. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. We stream just about every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Link is in the description and also the top comment down below. And if you found this video helpful and any other guides we have on the channel, please consider subscribing down below. With that, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.